人間環境フォーラムにご協力いただきまた米国の NGO インターニュースのご講演をいただき開催することができました誠にありがとうございます私はこの企画の主催団体である一般社団法人環境パートナーシップ会議の副代表理事をしております星野智子と申します本日の司会を務めさせていただきますので最後までよろしくお願いいたします今回はタイトルにありますように SDG14 の海洋の課題にスポットを当てまして持続可能な漁業を実現するためにどのような共同連携ができるかを皆さんと一緒に考えていきたいと思っております本日7月15日はオンラインではあるんですがスイスジュネーブにあります世界貿易機関 WTO において漁業補助金閣僚会議が開催されています現地時間午前8時からの開始ですからもう2時間前ほどに始まっておりますこの閣僚会議では有害補助金つまり違法無報告無規制漁業いわゆる IUU 漁業や過剰漁獲乱獲につながる補助金を廃止するための国際合意の設立を目指していく方針が確認されることが期待されております。世界の魚類の 34% が乱獲されて沿岸地域の貧困を招いており漁業資源の枯渇が重,要重大な懸念となっていることと報告されております。今日は水産庁をはじめ、えー、漁業者加工流通飲食店研究者そして NGO メディアの方など多方面からご参加をいただきこの IUU 漁業や有害漁業補助金を撤廃し持続可能な漁業及び水産物の流,通や流,流通や消費を促していくための取り組みを第一セッションではマクロな視点からそして第二セッションでは企業等による取り組みなどに焦点を当てて議論をしまして何ができるのか皆さんと一緒に考えていきたいと思っておりますライブでもご質問を受け付けておりますのでご質問やご意見は Zoom の Q&A のところから書き込んでいただければと思います皆様にはチャットの方にもご案内しておりますが音声の件と Q&A の機能についてご案内しているとおりですのでご確認ください本日は同日訳機能がありますので日本語で聞かれる方は日本語英語で聞かれる方は英語のボタンを押して聞いてください Q&A は Zoom の Q&A 機能よりできるだけ簡潔にまたどなた宛てのご質問かをご指名あの書いていただければありがたいと思いますご協力をお願いいたしますそれでは本日は2時間1時間ずつ第,第1セッション第2セッションに分かれておりますがまず、uh, two session. First, we would like to start the, the first session We have the speakers and I would like to introduce the first presenter uh, We have Uh, the uh, Mr. Hirai. Uh, he is from uh, the fishery uh, agencies. Uh, Mr. Terai, and he is Assistant Director, Fisheries uh, Processing Industries and Marketing Division of the uh, fisheries agencies. And he is engaged in various measures, including seafood certificate scheme uh, to promote and sustainable uh, seafood distribution by eliminating IUU fishery, uh, deriving uh, Seafood from uh, the market. So I would like to invite uh, Mr. Terai as the first presenter. Mr. Terai, please. Thank you. Thank you for your kind introduction. I am Mr. Terai with Fisher Agency Processing and Di Distribution. Division. Let me get into the subject. So today I'd like to uh, explain about IEU fishing elimination. Namely, I'd like to focus on the law regarding that uh, topic as well as fishery and fishery eco, eco level. Let me start with act on domestic distribution and importation of specified aquatic animals and plants. So the law was established back in 2000, December, and the official agency is 
preparing for the enactment of the law in by 2022. So let me uh, explain the background both at home and abroad. Uh, this uh, legislation will cover both uh, domestic and overseas markets. In Japan, we are seeing um, illegal fish catching, poaching, and sometimes uh, illegal activities um, are taking place at night. So we have to shed light on the current situation, but uh, it's getting more and more difficult and complex to crack down the um, illegal activities. And outside Japan, I know that um, people's interests are getting bigger and bigger in light of SDGs. So anyway, the law was introduced back in December. And let me give you the overview of the uh, law. There are two parts on the left. You see category one that is targeting domestic market and category two refers to imported products. So I'd like to start with category one that focuses on domestic uh, transactions or distributions. So first, um, report has to be filed to the government by traders and then number is given to um, each filing or each report. And then transaction record and harvest must be recorded. And at the time of export, catch certificate has to be attached. So for the domestic uh, distribution transaction, those four steps are required. And regarding importation, it's much simpler. Catch certificate issued by third country has to be submitted. And then a custom should be able to identify illegal importation, if any. And regarding uh, species that are subject to the uh, regulation, still um, discussion is underway. So we will come back to you for details later. So the uh, distribution network could be quite uh, complex in Japan. And uh, freshness is important at the speed of um, assessment is important. The origin of the product is um, specified, but um, again, the speed is important from the perspective of all stakeholders. Stakeholders include um, many different parties. So in order to um, make it effective, we have to address different challenges, but we will um, do our best to introduce this act in a smooth manner not to cause any um, dis disruption or confusion. Next, I'd like to move on to fishery and aquaculture eco level. So this will uh, contribute to indirectly um, prevention by EU fishing. So this um, was introduced uh, in light of illegal or irresponsible activities. So in order to identify um, transaction that is in compliant, we decided to introduce this level. And um, consumers should be able to identify uh, products that are in compliant in the chain of custody, with the chain of custody certification. To uh, certify um, the level, there are two parts. One is production certificate. We make sure that products are in compliant and sustainably eco-friendly produced. And the second is chain of custody certification level um, is to certify products, products that are treated separately from non-certified products throughout the supply chain. And we believe that this can contribute to SDGs. I believe that this is attracting a lot of attentions. 
and we are gaining more and more awareness. Although awareness is still limited, so we'd like to uh, continue to um, educate consumers about our eco level. That is all for my explanation. Hirai-san, thank you. Terai-san, thank you very much. Thank you, thank you for sharing the information about CFD distribution law and certification system. Next, I would like to, we'd like to ask uh, uh, Professor Kaifu. Uh, he is the uh, the, uh, the uh, professor of the uh, the uh, Faculty of Law at Tokyo University, and he is engaged in the training of a glass wheel. Uh, so, Professor Kaifu, please. Let us put up uh, the presentation material. Thank you for the introduction. Uh, this is Kaifu of the Faculty of Law of the Chuo University. Actually, I am not a professional in the law or specialist, and I am engaged in the, uh, the fishery uh, research, uh, particularly in the area of the uh, uh, glass wheel eel issue. Uh, so slide, please, that presentation, please. Uh, please uh, wait uh, for a minute. Uh, today, I would like to talk about uh, the uh, uh, the glass wheel. And glass wheel, uh, we uh, grow. Uh, usually, uh, it is not uh, made that the uh, uh, glass is uh, all of the young eel is called a uh, glass eel. And when uh, we have uh, the uh, the eggs, uh, the we harvest from the sea and uh, breed uh, bre uh, them uh, in the pond. So we 100% uh, depend upon uh, the uh, natural eel. And as for all the glass eel or young eel, uh, there is a, a much uh, illicit, uh, illegal uh, trading uh, going on. And as for the domestic uh, the eel, either uh, they were uh, caught uh, domestically or imported. Uh, First, about those that, that caught domestically, the one that was caught uh, licensed and unlicensed, uh, there are two different sources. And of course, in order to catch uh, the glass eel, uh, you need a license. So if uh, you're not licensed, of course, that is illegal. And furthermore, in case uh, you are not uh, even if uh, you are licensed, you need to report uh, the catching of the uh, uh, glass eel. And if you're not reporting that, again, you are subject to the penalty. So as for the glass eel uh, caught domestically, either a caught illegally or a license, but uh, not reported. So there are three uh, different sources of the uh, EU glass eels. On the other hand, when we look at the one imported, uh, whether uh, there are two different sources, legal or smuggling uh, via third country. So as among uh, those uh, glass eel, uh, quite a lot are uh, smuggled into uh, Japan. Uh, please go on to the next one. So all of these uh, uh, glass eel, they mix together and uh, it is very difficult to differentiate uh, them when they come to the farm in japan so roughly speaking uh, we have uh, three different sources and they all come into uh, the same uh, farms in japan next please as a result uh, this is the situation they back in 2015 amongst the only 30 to 40 percent of the uh, glass eel uh, distributed uh, is actually uh, the uh, legal uh, type of the uh, glass eel. Next, please. And among these, uh, uh, we have uh, three different sources. As for the smuggling, unlicensed, uh, the fine has been raised to uh, uh, 30 million yen. So uh, this is a good thing. But other ones are the unreported and smuggling. Uh, those are the main problems. In order to eradicate uh, this problem, 
what is necessary is to uh, lift the uh, regulation prohibiting glass eel trade among different prefectures. And also we need to manage eel under the new CAT certificate scheme. And considering the uh, gist of this uh, seminar, I think it is very important to manage eels uh, under the new CAT certificate scheme. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Kaifu. Thank you. Uh, we uh, received the proposal about the proper allocation of the and also smuggling uh, the uh, measures. Next time, um, allow me to introduce Mr. Takeo Ota. Mr. Ota is a newspaper reporter and has been covering domestic and international initiatives to realize sustainable fishery. Mr. Ota, over to you. Thank you. Uh, let me share my slide. Okay, thanks for the opportunity. I am Ota. Uh, from the perspective of a newspaper reporter, I'd like to uh, discuss what can we do to prevent IUU fishing and make a progress. So first off, I'd like to uh, discuss um, IUU both at home and abroad. And of course, um, IUU is something that may not be obvious, so we have to um, establish a system that allows us to monitor and we also need to collaborate with different countries so there are different kind of countermeasures some are pro and con so i'd like to focus on number three um import control so if there is a suspected case what we can do is not to import well, uh, the reason why I decided to pick up this uh, is that cost is not that high. When we import or export products, some um, documentation is supposed to be checked at a custom. And if the documentation says that this um, product or fish product is legally um, caught, I think um, we can prevent illegal uh, IUU from being uh, entered into this country. So I think it's important to um, apply this to as many species as possible, as well as as many countries as possible. Moving, moving on to Japan, well, we could make the best use of technology. And um, it's important to make sure that we can identify known IU, IUU um, fishing versus IUU fishing. And the cost could be high to introduce regulations in Japan. Unlike um, importation, it's not really that simple. It's not just um, custom because uh, all um, stakeholders reside in Japan. It's not easy to monitor everyone, including fishermen. So we need a system that helps people to record information. I think it's important to make the best use of IT technology so that we can uh, use a system to record necessary information. Next is about subsidy. I think it's an important topic. When it comes to fisheries uh, subsidy, I think that there are some misunderstanding. So if we say um, we want to uh, use subsidy to build fishing boats, if that would lead to overfishing, you may call it harmful, but um, it depends on species with global warming, some species are reducing population, but that's not the case for some other species. So not every subsidy is harmful. So we have to look at specific cases. And I think it's important to take a look at details. So subsidy has been criticized because there were some doubts that could um, harm resources or that may not lead to um, improvement of, of uh, efficiency. I think we have to take a look at details. So what should we do next? Well, in Japan, I think we need to increase um, budget for research and study. I know that there are some um, areas that need to go deep and to facilitate um, research we need budget in the united states 50 billion was available in japan i think it was 870 million 
And I, I know that a few hundred million budget have been allocated to research in Japan. I think we need more. We need monetary, financial, and um, human resources. And once um, we found something is sustainable, we can take another look at this. Talking about um, regulation or subsidy, some um, may be reluctant to move on. But again, the objective is to protect resources. Objective is to make sure that fishermen can continue to survive and um, make a living. And also, I think it's important to facilitate international discussion. Instead of being judgmental, instead of um, saying that all kinds of subsidies are harmful, I think we have to have a wider view. Japan is um, trying to protect fishermen. And if we make it clear the intent, I think uh, we can facilitate discussion. I think it's important to invite other countries to facilitate the discussion. Okay, that is open for my part. Thank you. Mr. Ota, thank you so much. Thank you for sharing insights and proposal on how to leverage um, data, step up controls and research and form international consensus. Thank you. Next, we have Yukiko Kuwata. Uh, Ms. Kuwata is an independent advisor uh, for uh, the uh, global uh, NGO, the Nature Conservancy, and is promoting international collaboration in the field of uh, marine and fishery policies. Ms. Kuwata, please. Thank you. Let me share uh, the material with you. Now, uh, the Import Control Implementation and Beyond is uh, today's title of my presentation. Now, uh, just a little bit of the uh, explanation about the TNC. Uh, this uh, organization was uh, established 70 years ago. Actually, we don't have a branch in Japan, but this is one of the largest NGOs uh, in the United States. And currently, we focus particularly on the uh, uh, tracking climate change, and the healthy oceans, land and water. And or around the globe, uh, we operate more than 100 projects for the world's oceans, which of course includes uh, the, uh, the efforts to abolish UU uh, fishing, uh, which is something very important. So we have been collaborating with the many different sectors around the globe. For example, in EU, uh, we uh, work with other, other uh, NGOs and we have the UU, uh, UU Watch. And also starting in 2016, we have been holding the uh, UU uh, Anti-UU Forum uh, to support this initiative. Also, uh, there is the new forum, uh, Leading uh, Women for the Oceans. Uh, this is the, the forum to for the women to work and support the uh, marine issues uh, from uh, the uh, political and economic aspects. We would like to uh, send out the message on this matter as well. Now, let me go into the main part. Uh, EU, in EU, they already have uh, the IUU uh, uh, issues. Some are successful, some not so successful. And uh, these uh, countermeasures uh, that would like to get some hints and lessons uh, because they have all uh, the, these uh, IUU measures are covering all the countries in this region. Uh, maybe there's something that we can learn from Japan. And at this point, an implementable roadmap to cover all the spices in the future is uh, something desirable, although it might be uh, rather realistic to start from the particularly vulnerable species. For example, in the United States, uh, they uh, have uh, picked up 13 uh, species, but according to uh, the uh, newest uh, report, well, so we have seen uh, some good uh, result. Uh, there is the uh, fabrication uh, in order to target other uh, species, 
so ultimately it is very important uh, important to cover all species and uh, we need to have no loop whole loophole for example if uh, there is a very stringent uh, restriction only in the uh, EU countries and in the United States. Maybe uh, there's a, uh, a movement coming towards other countries uh, like Japan and Thailand. And thirdly, a global alignment uh, is very important. I will refer to this later on uh, together with the EU, United States and RFMO. Uh, in other words, we need to uh, tackle this as a global issue. Number four, uh, we need to have a flexible to uh, so that we can change that in, in the future. Uh, the technology is uh, uh, changing and we need to uh, be able to timely uh, accommodate uh, such changes in the future. And furthermore, electronic a monitoring uh, using CCTV, net sources, etc., may be considered uh, for effective implementation. And uh, when it comes to the regulation against the IAU, a various important framework uh, are related with each other. Uh, so these uh, other scheme uh, need to be given consideration at the same time. But uh, why is the reason that we have to have this level of the very stringent regulation in Japan? I think there are four uh, reasons. Number one, IUU fishing is uh, interrelated, a very difficult, complicated uh, global issue. So this cannot be eliminated without the big players closely collaborating. And secondly, uh, the uh, prevent Japan uh, from uh, being targeted by uh, fraudulent operators. Once this happens, Japan uh, might be targeted by this uh, uh, operator and uh, uh, this will uh, damage those uh, honest, uh, good operators. So we need to protect these workers, uh, the fishery operators. And finally, Asia's importance in Japan's capacity for leadership. And this is where Japan should stand and to express uh, the leadership and uh, nextly why is it important to have all the sp species uh, because this could lead to a loophole and uh, could be a less effective and the third as the third point the extra workload and cost as a matter of fact according to the primarily uh, investigation of eu uh, when you have different regulations and different levels of the what you can do here, but maybe not other area, that could lead to mistakes and the uh, uh, extra workload. Now, uh, why is it necessary to have the alignment with the existing schemes? If you have a different requirement amongst different countries, there's always a different loophole, contradiction, and uh, when it's very complicated and different in each country, and uh, bad guys always tend to find them, but it is uh, difficult for uh, someone who is uh, trying to stop these uh, loopholes and bad uh, uh, behavior. So after all, uh, the for fisheries and supply chain actors and players, uh, the cost of complying with the different system would be uh, significant. And also the global alignment of uh, these uh, KDEs between major market ensures a global fair competitive field and a trade facilitation. Thank you very much. That's all for myself. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Kuwata. Uh, thank you for sharing uh, the practices in the European and American uh, field. Last but not least, I'd like to introduce Mr. Masanori Kobayashi, Senior Researcher of Ocean Policy Research Institute, Sase Sasegawa Peace Foundation, who studies blue economy and fisheries policy. Mr. Kobayashi, the floor is yours. Thank you. I am Kobayashi with Ocean Policy Research Institute, Sasegawa Peace Foundation. So today I'd like to uh, discuss uh, what we have been studying and um, share some findings with you in February this year. 
Ian Avina, New York Times reporter, joined our online seminar to discuss IUU fishing status and also challenges to uh, collaborate internationally regarding IUU fishing. This could lead to resource depletion, but not only that, sometimes forced labor or organized crimes are involved. So this is um, one of the social issues. So those who are involved in IUU fishing, the um, flag nation, flag states um, government's policy could also impact. And the countries that give permit, well, such as uh, coastal states and port states, a willingness to prevent um, IUU fishing could be very important. And as you pointed out, even if one country is trying to control this um, issue, the other countries uh, need to also get involved in order to make sure that policy is effective. So that, that, that's um, a topic that we discussed um, in the online symposium. I believe that uh, last month, his uh, book was um, also translated into Japanese and published. And as Otasa mentioned last week, in order to um, eliminate harmful uh, fishery subsidies, we had a seminar. And we also discussed that it's important to collaborate internationally to eliminate harmful subsidies. And it's important to uh, make sure that initiatives are executable. And IUU fishing could uh, deplete the um, resources and that would lead to economic loss. But uh, for uh, fisheries who are in compliance, may also face uh, some challenges or may lose income if we don't make it right. And in order to facilitate sustainable fishing, we have to give incentive. Benefit is important. And in Japan, well, Japan is the second or third largest fishery market. So it's important for Japan to act right regarding IUU fishing, as Oda-san just mentioned. It's important to ensure sustainability. And also, Terai-san briefly touched, but in stages, we need to prioritize um, species. And as Kuwata-san mentioned, um, some say that all species should be included in the scope. So we have to uh, strike a balance um, we may have to take a step-by-step -step, uh, approach, but at the same time, we have to be inclusive. And regarding economic loss, those who are incompliant may be impacted if um, IUU fishing gets spread because a uh, fish price could go down. They may not be able to enjoy enough uh, profit. As Hirai-san, also mentioned, it's important to gain understanding from consumers. This may be covered in session two. So to do it right, you may have to spend some money and the fishermen have to be in the and they have to also collaborate with different stakeholders. And then lastly, I think Japan has to be aligned with other countries and we should not separate imported products from others. Domestic uh, fishery products and imported products should be subject to the same level of regulation. So in order to realize an effective policy, we also would like to do our best. Thank you for your attention. Kobe-san, thank you very much. Thank you for sharing your insights and outcome of the symposium, symposium held last week. Thank you. Yeah, we'd like to uh, have the free discussion and we'd like to ask uh, the uh, Kobayashi-san uh, to serve as the moderator. And we have the uh, five presenter and we have uh, the short time until the five minutes before six o'clock and uh, 
we'd like to open the floor for any audience to uh, give the question. And um, if you have any question, uh, please uh, write in in the uh, the QA box. Our apology, we may not be able to answer all of the questions uh, due to the time constraint. And, uh, uh, Mr. Ma uh, Kobayashi, please. Uh, thank you. Uh, so we'd like to start uh, the uh, session. Uh, there's a question to uh, Terai san and we'd like to start uh, from us, Terai san Okay, so uh, regarding uh, certificate, you said it's important to be uh, speedy without um, spending a lot of time, you know, people or stakeholders have to be able to obtain certificate. Should we uh, focus on specific species or should we include all species? So I know people could be divided. How are you trying to strike a balance? And regarding MSC or eco level, in order to make the best use of the system, uh, we got a question from the audience. Well, the audience uh, suggested it's important to include 100% of the species. So what, what's your target? Do you have any uh, goal or target regarding eco level? And I know I would like to know if the agency is trying to educate consumers as well about the level. Thank you. Th thank you for your question. So regarding your first question. So regarding IUU fishing, you know, in order to make it complex, well, I, I'm, I know that Kuwata-san mentioned whether we should include all kinds of species into the scope. The agency is now taking a look at uh, this topic in details, whether to include um, all species. So the discussion is still underway. We have to make sure that the system is meaningful and effective. And that this system could involve wide variety of st stakeholders. For example, well, stakeholders include um, fishermen, wholesalers, buyers, processing companies, retailers. So the system could impact on different kinds of stakeholders. So we have to make sure that the system is reasonable for all stakeholders. So we need to um, spend enough time to discuss and make sure that we gain, we um, receive a gaining from stakeholders. As for Japan, numbering system is um, unique to Japan. It's different from the US. This is quite um, ambitious system. So we are quite motivated to make this um, successful. But once again, we should avoid confusion to introduce the system. So that, that's one. Secondly, regarding eco level, officially eco level. So the question is whether we have a target. Well, the third party uh, is supposed to certify the level. So the government has no target because it involves third party uh, certifying bodies. But at the same time, it's important to improve the awareness of this level in order to make it prevalent. So in this fiscal year, we have um, secured a budget to um, educate people and improve the awareness of the level among consumers. So I'd appreciate your support. Okay, that's it. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Terai. As for or how uh, we send out the information, uh, it might take a little time to explain about the uh, infrastructure, legal of infrastructure. Uh, so uh, maybe we'd like to wait for another time uh, together with the information sharing on the website by uh, the fishery agency. Uh, we need to uh, properly uh, get uh, the information uh, from uh, the fishery related operators about the where this fish uh, was uh, caught and how. Thank you very much. Next, I'd like to ask the uh, question to uh, Professor Kaifu. 
about the glass wheel uh, i uh, listened to your presentation very uh, with a, a great interest uh, you said uh, there are legal and illegal uh, distribution and uh, I think uh, to differentiate these uh, two sources would uh, be the benefit be beneficial uh, for all, not only for the consumers but the uh, for all the uh, related operators but uh, in reality uh, the a glass yield is not a part of the uh, a large uh, distribution or uh, uh, prioritized uh, the species. And what is actually the reason uh, this is uh, uh, making the difficult uh, to reform uh, this uh, uh, system. And uh, sometimes the eel is uh, uh, sold fresh and uh, some uh, are sold uh, frozen. And how uh, should we uh, think about uh, this uh, reality? Thank you for the question. Yes, uh, the uh, ablan uh, is included, but not the glass field uh, in the act for the improvement of the domestic trade of the specific marine animals and plants. And uh, when uh, there is a big pool, I think that there is the uh, the clearer uh, representation representation of the uh, relationship uh, in terms of the interest of the operators uh, probably uh, with this uh, privileged species uh, in case of abalone uh, maybe the operators uh, will be beneficial but in a case of a glass view uh, probably uh, the cultivators would be uh, uh, losing the benefit and this is making the uh, this uh, uh, improvement more difficult and because they don't think that it's going to be beneficial for them and with the uh, deep relationship uh, with the uh, many uh, policy makers, uh, they will be uh, putting up uh, the request uh, to the lawmakers. So there are quite a few uh, the factors uh, hampering uh, the innovation. And next about not only about the uh, glass eel, but there are uh, about the differentiation about those uh, natural uh, eel, uh, frozen or uh, the caught. Of course, uh, there are a uh, legal uh, the eel uh, imported through uh, legal uh, distribution. However, uh, amongst all the uh, imported eel, uh, there are many uh, illegal uh, in eel uh, in many different aspects. So uh, people tend to pay just uh, the glass to a uh, glass eel, but the uh, the it's not only glass eel, but the, we should uh, cover all the eel from uh, the young uh, glass eel to uh, the all grown up uh, eel, everything. Otherwise, we cannot uh, cover this issue. So uh, this may ultimately lead to, uh, to uh, the cover all the species. Otherwise, uh, we will always have the uh, loophole uh, to make this a problem even more complicated. And also, back to the first question, uh, what is making it more difficult? Uh, if uh, we have the uh, the eel uh, to be subject to the act for the improvement of the, the domestic trade of the specific marine animals and plants, this is of course very important, and the uh, fishery agency uh, plays an important role. And I have a question to uh, the Hirai-san uh, in the a part of this uh, the act for the improvement and domestic trade of the specific marine animals and the plants. Uh, it says uh, that it is very important to cover those uh, items uh, which is on verge of the extinction or in a danger of a uh, uh, badly damaged. And I think that they, I believe that eel uh, is uh, definitely a part of this. And uh, as the uh, fishery agency, uh, what is the view uh, of the uh, fishery? Uh, how do you view eel, whether that is subject, should be subject to the, this act or not? Thank you for your question. So regarding species, um, the working team is taking a look at details. So we have defined the criteria to certify species. And depending on criteria, 
we make a judgment whether each piece should be included in scope. So discussion is still underway. And so far regarding domestic catch, sea cucumber, abalone, and glass eel are included in the scope, are certified, thank you. So ident to identify species, I know people could be divided. This may not be a popular uh, topic, but I, I know that the authority is currently working on criteria to make a judgment. Thank you. Thank you very much. I agree that they first uh, set up the standards, then uh, to restrict the number. And next, I have a, a question to Ota-san. Uh, uh, regarding subsidy, I know it's difficult to draw a line, but I believe uh, that key word is sustainability. I think that's what you mentioned. So can you be more specific? Where should we focus on? Maybe uh, the answer could vary depending on time to make a judgment what is harmful, what is not harmful, what can be justifiable. So do you have any thoughts in terms of criteria to make a judgment? Thank you. So in a nutshell, I think that key is to be able to be accountable. I think that's what's important. We have to be able to explain that's sustainable. So if you could say that the current catch level does not deplete natural resources in the future, you have to be able to explain to all stakeholders, not just fishermen, but also others in order to access to subsidy. So in Japan, looking at Japan or Japanese uh, subsidies, if you want to ask for a compensation, income compensation, or use money to build uh, vessels, um, you were supposed to submit a plan how to manage resources to authorities. But the plan may not be good enough. It may not be objective to understand whether the plan is to protect resources. So that is why the uh, plan was criticized by some uh, lawmakers or academics. For example, in order to make money, well, you may be able to say that you can take two days off to protect fishermen. And you say that um, you could uh, conserve resources, but that may not be good enough. You may have to cut 50%. Uh, fish um, cannot really speak out, but um, based on the um, knowledge of fishermen and researchers, we just have to prove um, what is good enough. But I think uh, we will have this criticism moving forward. I think that's possible because I think uh, in two years from now, in order for fishermen to access to income guarantee compensation, new system will be introduced. And that is uh, based on the latest uh, scientific information to close the research management agreement and uh, publish the progress. So if the latest um, scientific um, information says that your catch level is good enough, uh, you can access the subsidy. So that is why there will be less some um, criticism moving forward. I'm not sure if this is going to work 100%. I think the key is to make the best use of latest uh, scientific knowledge and information. And the first and foremost, we have to improve the quality of scientific knowledge. Otherwise, uh, we may see challenges in terms of human resources and financial resources. And I think what's important is to accept inconvenient scientific truths. If uh, you say that the current level is overfishing, that may not be convenient. And also you may think that you don't wanna harm fishermen who are really working hard. You may say that the scientific um, information is not true. You may want to say that it's better than three years ago. Of course, the researchers are collecting information. If the fish population is growing uh, compared to three years ago, that's not the case uh, if you compare that against 20 years ago. So 
if that's uh, what researcher says instead of being uh, um, judgmental in, instead of denying that categorically you may be able to uh, face the facts and then make a suggestion to move to a different area or shift to different spaces so based on facts we should have a dialogue and then share ideas and know-hows and then um, if we can do that we can be sustainable and the quality of science will also improve so that will be win -win for every stakeholder thank you thank you very much so i think uh, it's important to make a policy based on scientific facts for natural or wild um, fire for example you can see what's wrong i wish uh, we could do we could see uh, same kind of indicator when it comes to overcatch so we hope that we can share information based on scientific facts next time um, we'd like to ask the, uh, the question uh, to kuata san uh, you uh, shared with us some of the advanced uh, practices overseas uh, maybe uh, we are a bit behind and uh, about these uh, overseas practices what are the actual uh, driving force uh, to really uh, put them forward how uh, do you view maybe there is something that we could strengthen uh, in japan uh, to support uh, fishery uh, operators and network uh, san please uh, thank you very much for the question uh, this kind of a question tend to be uh, that the um, NGO is always active in the United States. That's the end. That's not the kind of the answer that I want to sh sh uh, give. Of course, there are many different views, but as a matter of fact, there are many problems, of course, in the Western countries. But the the reason that the damage given by uh, e, e fishery is not something really that you can ignore. Uh, the uh, labor slaving and the uh, through uh, many scientific measures, uh, these damages are being visualized. That is very important. As Otosan said earlier about uh, the uh, sustainable accountability. Uh, sometimes uh, we even are rejected when we talk about this uh, accountability but uh, to put it the other way around when you have the uh, proper accountability uh, the bad guys are giving the damage to you and uh, if you can prove that the uh, this uh, is the damage that you're receiving and make it visible uh, that will uh, protect uh, the proper uh, fishery operators i think this is very important and of course, the science not uh, all what we need. It must be correlated with the uh, the non-governmental of uh, agencies and the governmental offices. And as a matter of fact, in the United States, uh, the government uh, has uh, uh, issued uh, the most recent uh, report uh, from uh, the uh, uh, the uh, trade uh, organization and the the collection and expression uh, dispersion of the uh, scientific information and the collaboration with the uh, fisheries and stakeholders and the uh, the governmental level uh, they are actually researching how important this could be so uh, the cross-sectional uh, collaboration uh, is with some problem of course is a uh, strong or stronger and that's one of the uh, driving force i believe Thank you very much. So uh, the, we need to uh, recognize the common understanding uh, to catch this uh, uh, against this loss. Uh, we are running out of time. Uh, the, I think uh, maybe you can give just, uh, I think I would like to ask each one, uh, each uh, presenter to give a short message to the audience, please. Hirai-san, please. Thank you. Today I uh, discussed act on domestic distribution and importation of specific aquatic animals and plants as well as aquatic um, eco level. So there are still um, things that we need to work on, but I'd like to ask for your continued support. Thank you. Hi. Ano, Professor Kawifu. Illegal fishing, illegal uh, processing and distribution, what damage uh, could be given to the society? Of course, that could be measurable. And in order to do that, uh, there are people who are 
uh, exploited. And we need to be creative about those people behind uh, because I know that it, there are many people who are actually being exploited because of these uh, bad crimes. And we need to change the uh, scheme. That's really something that I feel strongly recently. Uh, because uh, the fishery and the distribution, that's everything all done by uh, human beings. And we need to think about the uh, people involved. Thank you very much. Yes, this is uh, really uh, the SDGs. Ota, Mr. Ota, please. Yes, um, as mentioned in my presentation, when we introduce regulation or when we take another look at services system, especially uh, industry people, I don't think it's victims. People are victims. What we are trying to do is to improve fishery industry. But um, some people are skeptical. We are not trying to um, damage the industry. And some people are concerned. I, I do understand your concern. But again, uh, this is for the future. I think we have to be on the same page. We have to make it positive. That, that's what I expect. Thank you. Yes, I think we should be positive. I, I hope we can do that. Next, Kwata-san. And Kwata-san, please. Uh, maybe I am duplicating the same comments with other presenters. And talking issue of the IEU, uh, with the regulation, it's not that uh, we are bullying uh, the fishery uh, operators. And uh, you tend to be uh, very, uh, to focus on the minor issues of which species uh, should be selected or not. But it's all about uh, the uh, the big issues, including climate change and exploitation and the, uh, the, hum uh, sla the slavery, modern slavery. And it's not something that just one single operator can uh, the solve. So we need to go uh, advance hand in hand. Thank you very much. Uh, there are many questions and uh, why is not a uh, eel amongst the uh, the species they covered and what is the reason that the uh, the echo label is does not really uh, expand. So maybe we can continue in the second session. Uh, thank you all uh, the presenters of the first part. I would like to bring back uh, the floor to Ms. Hoshino. Thank you very much. Uh, Ms. Kobayashi-san, thank you very much. It was a very meaningful uh, discussion. Uh, we uh, see all different kinds of uh, uh, the fish in the supermarket and the fish stores. Uh, we are a maritime state uh, in Japan. And because we have been living and enjoying uh, the fish and the, uh, the food uh, culture with the food, I think uh, we can think about uh, the uh, sustainable uh, fishery and the realization. Uh, we'd like to start the next uh, second session, three minutes after six. Uh, so uh, we'd like to resume at the session three minutes after six. Uh, we need to uh, change the session, uh, the, the image. So just uh, stay a few minutes. Uh, the audience, uh, please just wait. Thank you very much. Thank you for waiting. We'd like to start uh, this second session. In this second session, we would like to look at the actual practices and the prospect for a sustainable fishery. And uh, we'd like to have the discussion with the uh, uh, fishing operators and processing operators, distributors, and in restaurants about the abolition of the IEU fishery and also the food deriving from IEU. And uh, next, first, I would like to ex uh, introduce Mr. Matsunaga, who is the, uh, uh, managing uh, the fishing uh, processing co uh, fishing company in Miyagi Prefecture. Um, Mr. Matsunaga uh, established the Meiho fishery in back in uh, 2012, and uh, in 2016, uh, this company has acquired uh, the Ecolabel MSC certificate, and uh, this company is uh, specialized in the uh, the, uh, the fishing of the uh, the uh, bonito and the uh, albal uh, tuna. 
and uh, he is, has been also uh, the leading figure in the region to support the advanced uh, initiatives, including helping fishery, bonitos, and uh, from uh, the ship uh, to come back to the port and after uh, the earth, great earthquake and recuperating uh, the regional fishing sets as industry. And uh, now we'd like to introduce uh, Mr. Matsunaga. Mr. Matsunaga, please. Hello, uh, my name is Matsunaga. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, this is Matsunaga from a Meiho fishery. So thank you for the introduction. Uh, we'd like to introduce, I'd like to talk about the initiatives that we're doing in a uh, uh, city. I, I myself, uh, although I uh, recognize myself as the uh, fishery uh, operator, but actually, I was engaged in the uh, processing of the uh, seafood. And after the great earthquake, which hit our region, I started to be one of the, the category of a fisher operator. As a see, seen from the real authentic uh, fisherman, maybe uh, they may say, well, I'm not the one. But uh, it's uh, starting in uh, 2012, uh, we started this initiative. Amongst those uh, initiatives, uh, we acquired the uh, 2016, uh, I acquired the MSC and the in the uh, Shiogama city, that's where uh, we have the um, a company. But actually I was brought up in Shizuoka prefecture in Yaizu and Yaizu is really at uh, the port a city, a fishing a port city. And that's where I uh, grew up from a very, uh, from my childhood in the, uh, 1990s uh, 90s, uh, 1960s the fishing uh, was very active and lively and uh, when i was a small uh, boy a uh, yaizu port was really uh, lively with the fishers fishery and uh, after i graduated from school i uh, went back to uh, the yaizu and started to work for uh, the process seafood processing company and uh, then at that time the the uh, memory that i had from uh, about the yaizu uh, the small fishing port and at that time when i went back to yaizu there was a big difference and the number of the ships uh, started to con decline and long time ago i still remember that there even on the uh, crossroad of the uh, big street uh, we used to see a lot of uh, big fish just uh, uh, and all over. Uh, so the one of the reasons that I uh, decided uh, to acquire MSC was that the, uh, um, I had some knowledge about MSC, but uh, at that time I really made a strong determination uh, to acquire this uh, to help uh, the fishing uh, industry and uh, i knocked in on the door of the msc office and uh, we happened to be uh, quite applicable uh, to the uh, platform of msc so uh, honestly speaking we were lucky uh, to be able to get the msc uh, certificate we were just lucky without that much difficulty However, we had to bear a certain level of uh, expense uh, to get this certificate. Of course, there was some subsidy. However, if you uh, try to get this certificate with just one single small company, it might be a little difficult. So you need to form a team uh, by, by which uh, it makes it easier uh, to uh, acquire the MSC. Now, what's different before and after the acquisition of MSC a certificate? Uh, we use just one single rod uh, to uh, fish. Uh, there's not that much difference, but for oh, the fisherman, I always tell that because we are now uh, have acquired uh, the uh, MSC certificate, we tell them not to just throw away the garbages 
and if the fish is uh, too small, don't take them. And good thing about the uh, MSC, uh, because I had been engaged in the processing of the uh, uh, pro uh, fishery for a long time, uh, for example, uh, to the uh, supermarket, we were welcomed very much, particularly by a large companies, the large supermarkets. Uh, there are quite a uh, number of the uh, supermarkets which support us. So in terms of the business, uh, we were able to increase our revenue, but when it comes to the unit price, whether uh, we can actually increase the uh, unit price uh, from 100 yen to 120, 150, that's not the case. Uh, after all, the end users or end consumers uh, don't really know about the uh, MSC, and so uh, the awareness is still very low uh, to the end consumers. So we cannot ask them to buy our fish just because they're with the MSC. And finally, as the uh, someone who is engaged in this uh, fishery uh, industry, we are trying to be more and more eco-friendly, and we believe what we're doing is the right, and we believe, and we continue to advance, and that's what we must do. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Matsunaga-san. So acquiring MSC, uh, you are promoting uh, uh, the uh, sustainable fishery and also uh, very interesting here that you're giving uh, the uh, added value uh, to seafood. Next, please allow me to introduce Mr. Ryohei Nomoto, president of Haneda Ichiba. Mr. Nomoto has established a noble procurement and distribution fishery network and appears frequently on the TV and magazine. We'd like to hear how he's trying to realize sustainable fishery overcoming COVID-19. Nomoto-san, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, I'm Nomoto with Haneda Ichiba. Please allow me to introduce myself and my company. Uh, may I share my slide? Yes, please. Okay, I'll give you a minute. Um, do you want me to drive the uh, slide? I think I can manage. You have many slides. Okay, I can share my screen. Yes. Okay, this is about Haneda Ichiba or Haneda Market. Let me switch to slideshow. Okay, thank you. Okay, our company is located at Haneda Airport in Japan. So the company, um, has been um, running up until today, and I used to work for restaurant industry. And our shareholders, Mitsubishi Estate, Sushido, Noreen Chukin Bank, and those are my shareholders. What makes our company unique is that um, oh, it's it's not a really a direct, but um, without many layers. Um, we purchase products from fishermen and deliver products to customers uh, consumers as soon as possible and uh, we have a traceability system every product can be traced 100 percent we are able to uh, track who could which products so I'm going to skip my, uh, some of my slides. Let me explain what our company uh, does. Oh. 
ナモトさん、ちょっと音が聞こえてないみたいな。Um, I'm not able to hear you, Mr. Namoto. Can you just ask me to explain the slide? Are you... Okay?、Uh, okay, uh, let, let me explain. Okay, okay, 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 let me explain. Temperature is checked, inspection is done. Fish was caught at Fukuoka in the morning, and then it, it's、uh, delivered to Haneda by 8 30. So you see squid? It's really fresh. So inspection is done, weight is checked. And then by customer, based on、uh, slip. Products are shipped to supermarkets or restaurants. Products are being sorted by customer. You can、uh, check who caught、uh, fish at what time or when. Okay, so fish is caught in the morning in order to increase value of the products.、Um, we do some processing and we do labeling、uh, to indicate value of the products. And then、uh, we include flyers in the、uh, package.、Uh, we include a poster of a fisherman in order to motivate producers.、Uh, we do Something、uh, that could increase value. So instead of,、um, well, we, we make sure that fish is not directly exposed to ice. We use a plastic package and then、uh, add additional layer so that fish is protected by ice. And we do processing at,、um, at the airport, Haneda Airport. And then、uh, it's vacuum、uh, packed. We do our business with、um, different countries. Its、uh, products are vacuum、uh, packed, and the guts and bones are removed before being shipped to overseas. So that, that's、uh, what we do. And then、uh, products are shipped. So that's what we do.、Uh, we partner with AA and JL so that products can be delivered on time. And also, we started to work with JR East to、uh, use Shinkansen to deliver products. Ohoku, Joetsu, Hokkaido. And different production areas are connected to Tokyo. Last year, we were able to occupy e n t i r e a car to deliver around 800 kilograms of products to Tokyo. At Tokyo Station, there are three restaurants, and the fourth restaurant will open next month so that consumers can enjoy fresh food there. Delivered by Shinkansen, and also we use、uh, high speed buses to deliver products, fishery products from different parts of Japan. We deliver products to different restaurants. At Tokyo Station, you can find Konbeya Bell Sushi Restaurant. For the first time in Japan, Eko Levo、uh, Sushi was introduced,、um, such as tuna and different species, or certified. As eco friendly, eco level will be introduced to different、uh, stores moving forward. And on 21st of July, at Tokyo Station, Tokiwa、uh, building, another store opened. And next month, there will be another restaurant to be opened in Ikebukuro Sunshine Building. So we manage not just distribution, but also. Retail、uh, stores or restaurants for consumers to enjoy. Okay, Nomoto san, thank you very much. 
Thank you very much. I understand that uh, you are trying to be sustainable while keeping eye on your eye and trying to connect consumers with uh, sustainable fishermen. Thank you very much. Next, we'd like to introduce uh, Hiroaki Kijima. Uh, Mr. Kijima is uh, the head of the, uh, the business strategy office of uh, uh, the, uh, the company Kijima, and he is uh, having a lot of the initiative uh, to have the uh, sustainable food uh, in the in restaurant. Mr. Kijima, please. So, hello, uh, my name is Hiroaki Kijima from uh, the company Kijima, and thank you for this opportunity. But today, I am going to talk about uh, the uh, what restaurants can do for sustainable fishery. I have about five minutes to talk about uh, what uh, we are doing and what we could do to contribute uh, to the sustainable fishery as the restaurants. Firstly, a brief explanation, uh, introduction about the Kijima, my company. Kijima is uh, located in the uh, Totsuka Ward, uh, which is, uh, it started uh, the uh, Japanese restaurant in Totsuka Ward of uh, Yokohama City in the Kanagawa Prefecture. We have six restaurants. We also do the catering, and also we do the sale at uh, the delicatessen and uh, some delivery as well. As you can see on the right hand side, uh, typically uh, we are providing uh, traditional typical Japanese food. And uh, this is the management philosophy uh, to contribute to the uh, creation and development of the sustainable community uh, through uh, food. And in order to do that, uh, we have a lot of the initiatives, for example, uh, the sustainable seafood, uh, which is the theme of uh, today's session. And uh, we uh, try to use organic uh, uh, vegetables and uh, uh, the good uh, food uh, in uh, line with the animal uh, health. And uh, we try not to use any uh, materials uh, which may pollute uh, the ocean. Now, uh, what uh, we believe we can do as a Kijima for uh, the rich ocean? Nowadays, about the two, three years in the past, within our company, uh, this is the slogan that we are trying to send out as the Kijima, tasty Japanese cuisine, rich ocean forever. Uh, back in 2019, as the very first Japanese restaurant in Japan, we acquired a COC certificate and we uh, a treat sustainable seafood with the MSC uh, certificate, ASC uh, certificate in all the uh, restaurants that we are operating. For example, the sustainable seafood uh, certificate, such as MSC and ASC, we are showing the percentage of how many percentage of the food that we're actually using of that kind amongst all the different foods that we are providing in the restaurant. Uh, starting around autumn last year, we started what we call the Kijima Organic, uh, the Sustainable Organic Challenge. And at this website, by different items, uh, how much uh, MSC food and MSC fishery, uh, the seafood we are using is shown. And also uh, together with the, uh, the Environment uh, Conservation Organization, we uh, provide the uh, special menu focusing on the sustainable seafood. Last year, we had uh, such an honor that uh, we were awarded uh, the second Japan Sustainable Seafood Award. And today, uh, what we believe we can do at Kijima to abolish uh, you, you, uh, fishery. I, or as a Kijima, a restaurant uh, can do is, for example, for or the uh, customers, we want to make sure that uh, the, the customers can expect that the, uh, uh, they can be provided the sustainable seafood as long as they go to Kijima. And we want to provide uh, such an option to enable uh, 
uh, such provision uh, to the customers. I'm sure there are all different views. However, as a restaurant, we won't always uh, want the customers to understand that once they come to Kijima, uh, when they come to Kijima, uh, the sustainable seafood is always available to the customers. I think that's the first thing that we think we can do. And nextly, uh, to the producers, we want to ensure there is an accessible exit uh, for the fishery products, meaning that we want to support uh, the producers. We've been in this business over 40 years, and we are aware of the problems uh, in the uh, producers, of course, including uh, the fishery industry. So by uh, making sure that we buy uh, their products, meaning the fish and seafood, uh, we want to sustain it, uh, we want to maintain and sustain them. And also in terms of the quality, uh, it is very important to have the credibility for quality. And we have to have the people understand that sustainable seafood is delicious and we want to strengthen this impression and this will lead to added value the issues and the prospect uh, for future uh, the uh, sea harvest is the uh, something that is uh, supporting the japanese uh, food and uh, even compared with the many uh, different cuisine of other countries uh, this uh, uh, cuisine we are proud it's extremely um, attractive and the uh, characteristic however at the same time we're concerned about the depletion of such uh, resources not that, that we stop eating as uh, the sea harvest because they're uh, running short but whilst respecting and continuing to respect the Japanese cuisine, we also want to send out the message that uh, we can also keep uh, the sustainable uh, fishery and uh, the seafood and the fishery resources whilst enjoying uh, the Japanese uh, cuisine culture. So uh, quickly, I, uh, I try to explain about what we try to achieve in the Kijima uh, restaurant. And I hope that, that we can continue to contribute uh, for that aim. Thank you very much. So uh, thank you very much, Mr. Kijima. Uh, by uh, continuing to providing the sustainable seafood, uh, the, uh, they are making their efforts in this uh, direction. Actually, uh, one of my staff uh, recommends this, uh, uh, their restaurant highly as a highly recommended restaurant. Next, uh, let me introduce Ms. Minako Iwe, Chair and CEO of Sailors for the Sea Japan, who has been working on marine conservation and sustaining fishing industry. Ms. Iwe, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, my name is Iwe. Sailor for the Sea Japan. Nice to meet you all. So today I'd like to um, explain uh, marine conservation and sustainable fishing industry as well as IU, IUU fishing. So again, I thank you for your kind introduction. I am the founder and the chair of Sailor for the Sea Japan, and I am also uh, working for Kyoto University Global Environmental Studies, as well as Keio University, SFC, as a researcher. So about our sailors for the sea, as you can see on the screen, we have uh, developed Blue Seafood Guide, that is a rating program. So as you may know, in order to assess sustainable seafood, we need assessment and we need a rating system. So there are two uh, options. And the blue seafood guide, like the one in the US, um, it, it's a rating program. So we do have a unique methodology to do the rating. 
So we have a printout like this, and um, you can access to our website. It's free of charge to access to the information. You can make the best use of uh, this. As a spin up, you can look at the right hand side. We have blue seafood recipe, and down below, you can find blue seafood beauty book. Every Monday, we use SNS to uh, send this some um, information to subscribers. And uh, Miye municipality, Miye prefecture, and also Tokyo Metropolitan Government um, closed and comprehensive agreement with us. So we have one for Tokyo, one for Tokyo version. Okay, I'd like to move on to the next slide. So this is the current um, rating program. I'd like to explain a bit about methodology. So if you look at our Blue Seafood Guide, you can find our uh, MSC and uh, ASC, BSC, together with uh, Seafood Watch Best Choice. And then you can see there are some overlaps. And we also refer to uh, official agencies uh, score and also database um, to make an assessment. And those that are not in, included in the overwrap uh, portion, species can sit in the blue uh, box under the blue seafood choice. So with this, uh, we are able to assess species available in Japan. And uh, on the left, you can see Japanese water slash vessel. So this um, is to support stakeholders in Japan, fishermen um, in Japan. So we decided to highlight Japanese water and the vessel, I mean, a species that fall under uh, Japanese water. And um, this is the uh, methodology. This is similar to MC, MSC's um, methodology. You can find, well, I, actually, our team member worked with MSC work member to define this. But our methodology's uh, criteria is different. So you can make a comparison to find out what are the differences and what are something in common among different. Um, certificates. This is an example. Next week, Olympics will start. MSC uh, guide was uh, introduced uh, in Rio and London. ASC was also used, and Tokyo is down below. And uh, in Osaka, Osaka 2025. Uh, there will be um, expo, so we hope that um, we can be up to the international standard. And also the law was enacted uh, regarding the domestic distribution and importation of specified um, seafood. And uh, we hope that all species will be incorporated into the scope because uh, across the world, well, uh, if you look at Europe, all species are included in the scope. And the US, um, I know that Bill has just passed to expand the number of species from 13 to all. So if we don't do uh, the same, Japan could suffer from um, disadvantages and also international community may be disappointed with what Japan has done. So in order to prevent the uh, harm, we should uh, incorporate all fishes, all species into the scope. That is all for my part. Thank you very much. Well, uh, it was very interesting to learn about Blue Seafood Guide, uh, which promotes uh, consumption of uh, abundant fish species. I hope uh, it'd be great. I hope more restaurants can start to use Blue Seafood Guide. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for your presentation. Thank you very much, all very interesting presentation. Once again, thank you very much. 
And once again, uh, just like the first session, we have a little less than 20 minutes, and I'd like to ask uh, Kobayasan to serve as the moderator again. Uh, with the uh, cameras on uh, for uh, the uh, presenters, we would like to have uh, the free uh, discussion session. And uh, we are would like to invite uh, the audience to give the question again. Uh, thank you very much. And we actually have received the question. Firstly, uh, the qu first question is to Matsunaga-san. Uh, is there anything that you have felt about the uh, uh, after uh, listening to the uh, presentation? And when you think about uh, the 10, 20 years later, uh, the uh, longer term strategy is important with the change of the fishing ground and the uh, higher uh, the, the declining resources. Uh, what's the, the future as prospect? Uh, maybe you can uh, refer to that, please. Uh, first of all, Matsunaga-san, please. Yes, thank you. Uh, the, having listened to your presentation as the fisher, uh, fisher operator, I was just uh, uh, so ashamed as one of the uh, operator because uh, everyone is, uh, has, is uh, studying so well and because I am uh, involved and occupied with the day-to-day -day, uh, business, and um, I, you, and other things, um, we have been uh, too busy. And there are many things that I, I'm not even aware of. Uh, I should really learn more, just because, particularly because I'm the uh, uh, someone who is working on the front line. And when we think about the situation 10 years later, 20, 30 years later, uh, we have uh, certified, uh, uh, it's been over uh, a little less than 10 years since uh, we acquired the MST now as uh, one of the uh, fishing industry operator. Definitely, it's not, uh, uh, I, we haven't made a mistake. And I think that what we have come through is correct. But if we only, uh try to struggle it's not good enough we need to have the team uh, to involve other uh, stakeholders that's leading to uh, the uh, bigger initiatives and that's maybe something that that we uh, must perform thank you very much matsunaga-san yes uh, the uh, team forming is very important next uh, nomoto-san so, I know that you are a pioneer of the fishery product distribution. So, talking about MSC, well, uh, people may say that MSC products taste different, but no matter some looking at um, what you have done about distribution, so consumers are looking for high quality products and uh, you have to work with some um, fishermen who are who can be trusted and i think uh, what you are doing is to connect trusted fishermen with consumers do you think that the market will grow so well, what's your focus area well, uh, tabetoku, hokumake, or fishermen and others, I think, have more opportunities to sell their products to consumers directly, and including us, we use the uh, EC channel, e-commerce channel, and um, with EC channel, we can sell a lot of products, and I think uh, the market will grow substantially moving forward, but talking about fish, unlike um, fruits like orange, you can't just uh, uh, cut by yourself. So who is going to process fish for consumers? If you uh, look at supermarkets like IY or others, um, they can't really find uh, part-time staff who can cut and process fish as the population is aging. I think that's one of the challenges that we have to address. Well, even if products are delivered to Tokyo, I don't think uh, housewives or people can really cut 
fish and the process fish by themselves. So I think uh, one challenge we have to address is to find people who are able to process and cut uh, fish for consumers. But a restaurant operator like Kijima may help. We deliver products to restaurant operator and then they may be able to process fish. So if we can pro develop a platform like this, that would be great. If a fisherman can catch uh, fish and then uh, we can deliver products to platform and then uh, consumers may be able to order fish um, online in the morning and then stop by a restaurant like a kitchen restaurant and then pick up already processed uh, fish in the evening. So that could be interesting. So restaurant could be a platform. Guru Navi is a member. They, they work with 130,000 restaurants. I think we are capable of delivering fish to an operator like them. So we need a professional who is able to process fish for consumers. So if we can find that piece, I think the uh, market could become even bigger. And regarding IUU, IU, well, these days, um, what we procure fish from different um, parts of the nation. And I we had an opportunity to speak to fishery agency and uh, some fishermen um, in Tohoku is trying to sell glass eel to us. So that could be a surprise. I mean, uh, some are really small. And also uh, blue fin tuna is another common uh, species, frozen uh, tuna fish as is without uh, that being removed. Tuna could be delivered to us. It's frozen. So it's really fresh. And um, they, they try to sell um, one kilogram of the tuna with 500 yen. So I, I can tell that's a fortune. And also imported fish um, is being uh, distributed. I know that there are a lot of wholesalers, I mean, uh, processing companies, I should say, that are looking for tuna because uh, one quote in Japan sea could be very expensive. So some um, illegally caught uh, fish is being distributed in Japan. So we have to uh, find a way to stop that from coming into the um, supply chain. I know that official agency is trying to address this, but that's a challenge. Yeah, I understand. Well, thank, thank you for sharing your uh, story with us. So illegal fish is coming into the market, coming into uh, the supply chain. And I, and I think it's an important uh, challenge to address how to find talents who are capable of uh, processing fish for consumers. Yeah, we'd like to talk more about this topic at a later date. Thank you. Now I'd like to uh, ask Kijima-san, there are quite a few uh, questions uh, to Kijima-san. Uh, some people say uh, that the MSC uh, certificate to seafood is not really widely available in society. Uh, the distribution is not stable. Uh, maybe it's not an indicator about this taste or uh, nutrition, and some people uh, criticize, uh, point out about MSC. And also, it is not uh, well uh, understood uh, by the meaning of the MSC. And uh, the species, uh, maybe there are the customers that want uh, some of the fishery and the seafood uh, for which uh, the species is not covered in this, uh, uh, to be subject to the sustainability uh, the act. And what do you think about the current situation? Well, thank you very much for your question. Uh, firstly, about uh, to answer Nagahama-san, uh, who gave the uh, two questions. Matsunaga-san said that the uh, the people are not necessarily uh, are willing uh, to buy just because they're uh, proper and uh, uh, with the uh, certificate. My answer is yes, that is correct. And the people do not buy uh, the the fish seafood higher just because they're fine or or uh, proper. 
uh, we, if we uh, try to uh, replace our the artificial uh, material ingredient uh, with all organic or natural or uh, a proper uh, the spices and the uh, seafood, uh, sometimes it could be as high as uh, twice as much. Uh, frankly speaking, uh, currently uh, it is difficult for us to pass on such costs uh, to the customers. So whilst we continue our efforts to buy higher, but uh, as you may easily imagine, it's not easy uh, to make them distribute at a higher uh, price. And all the seafood uh, uh, places or supermarkets, I'm sure these stakeholders all share the same uh, problem with us. So it's not that the, the customers understand probably 100% about the, what the meaning of the, the certificate. Next, in, guess, uh, in case that the, uh, the seafood with the traceability, uh, apart from whether they're actually a number or not, uh, if we are willing to buy them more expensively, the answer is yes and no. Because the values of the seafood, uh, talking about the sustainability, uh, traceability, it is just one of many indicators uh, of the values of the, uh, uh, the seafood. The people don't buy them just because sustainable. So, because sustainable, sustainability is not necessarily something to prove that they're more tasty. And currently, uh, they're not to consider the same value uh, between the sustainability and the taste. So, we love to buy uh, the seafood. And it'll be wonderful if we could uh, make an announcement that the Kizimo will buy anything as long as that is sustainable. But uh, frankly and practically, we cannot do that. Because uh, AC and MSC, they do not necessarily uh, guarantee the quality. And no, no people think that they, they are willing to accept uh, any seafood, even if they don't taste well, only if they're sustainable. Nobody thinks that way. So quality is also very important. And of course, in restaurant, supermarket, in our business, we have to have the, uh, the viable business. We need to keep our business running. So that's why I said yes and no. Thank you very much. Yes, sustainable, reasonable, tasty. Uh, it must be very difficult to satisfy all these conditions. Next uh, to ESM, please. So ESM, I know that you are working with different uh, restaurants and businesses. So uh, one of the questions uh, says that um, if um, your system is, in, is compatible with overseas system, and I'm talking about the definition of sustainable food, or MSC. I, I think uh, you covered this in your presentation, but uh, is uh, this the same as, uh, I mean, a certified uh, seafood is the same as sustainable? And how are you trying to convince uh, people to pay more for sustainable food from the perspective of restaurants? Um, they, they cannot really uh, pay a lot of probably money for sustainable food. I, I, I wonder if you could share your thoughts on that. Thank you. So about your first question. Regarding the Global Seafood Rating Alliance, uh, it's uh, run well, uh, 11 programs in 12 uh, countries, I believe. So that's an international alliance. So there is a, a well, there will be a common or standardized a standard. Uh, well, we have been uh, trying to establish a standard, and on a monthly basis, uh, we meet um, with uh, members to establish standard. And regarding the certification and rating program, certificating uh, rating collaboration alliance is available. Again, uh, we are trying to uh, seek for standard it's still evolving so what i can say for now is that for example the criteria for seafood watch um, 
may say that every seafood in Japan is not compliant because of uh, lack of data in Japan. By catch rule or harvest rule data is not enough in Japan. It's limited, I should say, in Japan. So with the seafood watch methodology, all products may be uh, it may be incompliant. So that is why we decided to establish Blue Seafood Guide. So I'm not saying which is good, which is bad. It varies from uh, place to place. So again, a standard is uh, being developed. It's still under being development. And regarding the de definition of sustainability, I know that um, there are different opinions, different uh, discussions. And if they all issued a code of conduct, and there is a pillar, and I may see and uh, as uh, defined three principles. So again, um, I think it's need it's necessary to discuss what sustainability is, but it's not a legally binding uh, definition at this moment. And lastly, regarding pricing issue, for example, uh, Nomoto san, Kijima san, and Matsunaga san have a uh, certificate. Once a uh, majority of operators have a certificate, what would happen? Then uh, non certified products are not going to sell. I think that's what we should be aiming at. I know we are discussing IUU today. Then how can consumers distinguish between IUU and non-IUU fishing? That could be a, a challenge. But um, at this moment, if you consume certified products, at least you can avoid consuming illegal um, products and also newly established um, act on domestic distribution. If uh, the act can incorporate as many species as possible, that would uh, also help us to eliminate IUU fishing from the market. Yuri-san, thank you very much. Well, uh, we are running out of time, so let me move on. So I would like uh, each presenter to give uh, the last uh, message. Uh, Matsunaga-san uh, earlier mentioned that it is very important to uh, try to form a team, just not uh, trying uh, to work by uh, each stakeholder. I'm sure there are many uh, things to overcome, but uh, please uh, talk about the prospect in the future and um, any uh, messages uh, to the customers or, or the fishery operator or anyone uh, in the fishery industry, please? Of course, I, I don't really have the perfect answer to give, but my uh, sentiment or the spirit as in one of the things, uh, persons uh, in this uh, fishing operator, uh, fishing industry, including all the stakeholders, uh, I think it's very important to continue to uh, make this appeal uh, with all my might of uh, my life. Uh, I think uh, that uh, attitude will lead to uh, what uh, we'll be able to achieve in 50 years time, maybe. Thank you, Mr. Matsunaga, thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, uh, we have a personnel from Fisher Agency. I know that you have been working with authorities as well as businesses. So if you think about Japan uh, fishery industry, how can we make it evolve from the perspective of a head of a business and also as a stakeholder of this industry? I'd like to ask for your comment. Um, can you uh, unmute yourself? 
As a matter of fact, um, I, I got the same question, similar question, what we should do by 2030? And I think we have to prevent um, government officials um, taking positions of big corporations after being retired. Because um, in order to be fair, I think we have to make it clear. We have to fix the situation. And uh, we, we discussed the uh, catch documentation scheme. Well, finally, uh, official agencies started to work on it. Then uh, they decided to include the sea cucumber and the abalone. Uh, I was actually taking part in the me meeting, but uh, the system is not really systematic. It's really manual to make report. Well, abalone could be included in sea cucumber to count a lot, and uh, from our perspective, it's nonsense. So we have to develop a system so that uh, all the stakeholders and uh, all sellers and brokers uh, would find the system efficient. Otherwise, it's not going to be sustainable. And there may be some loophole unless the system is uh, fully developed. Th thank you very much. So we have to take the system from scratch. I think that's important. Th thank you for your thoughts. Next, uh, Mr. Kijima, as the uh, restaurant operator, uh, please give the uh, the final message about the prospect in the future, and to someone who would like to follow uh, your uh, roadmap. Thank you. Well, we are just a small restaurant, and. Uh, I feel rather embarrassed about talking about the, our future prospect, but uh, I am committed uh, to continuing to do whatever uh, we can do, uh, increasing the uh, certificate seafood uh, percentage. And uh, as uh, Mr. Matsunaga said, uh, the, the many operators are uh, doing uh, everything they can do to uh, make the fishery industry sustainable. So we would like to uh, do the basic of the business, meaning uh, provide a proper food and a good uh, uh, cooking uh, to serve the best tasting delicious seafood to the customer. And I am not sure other players will follow what we are doing in our restaurant, but I just want to tell you that it's not something easy. Sustainable seafood is uh, uh, very important uh, to be uh, presented to the customers as one option. So uh, to make the sustainable seafood available to the customer, and uh, the first step would be for the customers to experience a sustainable seafood. That's what I believe. So I would like to uh, continue this movement in my restaurant. So back to the basics, right? Thank you very much. Uh, may I? May I? Uh, I think uh, there are many a uh, few questions that I was not able to answer, but uh, please tell me uh, later on how I'd like I, I could answer the questions raised because I'd love to answer these uh, questions later on. Thank you and uh, sustainable seafood uh, as the uh, uh, great supporter. Uh, Mrs. Iwia, please. Thank you. Once again, thank you for the opportunity. I know different kinds of stakeholders are working really hard. I think it's important to work together. And above all, I know there are a lot of challenges, but uh, for the first time in seven years, Official agency is working really hard to transform the administration. So I'd like to extend our great respect to the authority I am backing on that support. And for consumers, we hope that they can enjoy choosing and um, consuming sustainable seafood. Thank you for your continued support. Thank you. Sustainable fishery, sustainable. Um, seafood industry 
we hope you can continue to enjoy success. So, Hoshino san, back to you. Once again, thank you so much. Kobayashi san, thank you very much. Panelists, thank you very much. I enjoyed the in depth discussion. It's great to hear from those um, frontliners. So in part one, uh, we looked at current status and challenges of IUU fishing. And in part two, we had uh, practical examples and prospects and a sustainable fisheries. So, SDG, SDG is clearly state about um, IUU fishing to abolish IUU fishing and promote sustainable fishery. So, so many people are engaged and I think we need to stay engaged and work together. I hope uh, this seminar has helped you, you to deepen your understanding. So, we are also promoting SDGs. So, EPC will uh, continue to collaborate with all of you to realize sustainable society and achieve SDGs. Thank you for your continued support. So, we were supposed to um, make a closing remark, but um, unfortunately, Mr. Awano, Japan Journalist Association, um, is not well, so he's not able to uh, join us, but um, time is up. So once again, thank you very much for taking your time to join us. And thank you so much for your presentation. And Mr. Kobayashi, moderator, thank you very much. So with that, I'd like to close online seminar. Online seminar, SDG stakeholders meeting, ending IUU fishing and Hamahu subsidies, pursuing collaboration and partnership. And when you leave the Zoom meeting, uh, you will find a pop-up screen that asks you to fill in a questionnaire. I hope you can fill that in so that we can make the best use of your inputs to uh, plan the future webinar.